Okay, back down at uh, the Beale Farm for our final trials visit before combining. Uh, hopefully, I think we'll be combining these in a couple of weeks' time. Just need a little bit uh, more time on them. You can see, as we looked at with the drone and various things, there is still a little bit of difference in maturity. So we've got a few varieties have still just got to finish yet. As you can see in amongst the trials here, they are really sort of necking over the early varieties there. We've got the grains are hard to the bite. You know they're sort of well below the 30% moisture, but we have got, and we've found this with a lot of a lot of fields recently, got a lot of these late little secondary tillers come in. So we just need to wait for them to mature off, so that hopefully they'll shrivel up and they'll go over the back of the combine and don't represent the uh, don't get into the sample. But yeah, I mean varieties. I look at the sorry the the, the barley's looking quite good. Just waiting on this little, last little bit of sunshine, and then hopefully we'll get it harvested. So. As we promised, uh, we've got Paul Huntley with us today, who's going to maybe just talk a little bit more in depth about the varieties. We're currently in the middle, uh, stood by Sassy, uh, between Sassy and Firefox, and Paul's just going to talk a little bit more about the varietal attributes. Okay, thanks, David. Um, but what we've got is, um, this, there is some logic in the, the order we've got the varieties in the field. So we've got the distilling only varieties at the start, and then we go on to uh, the dual purpose varieties, distilling and brewing, and then finish up with the, the, the brewing varieties. So here we've got uh, the distilling only varieties, the first of which is KWS Sassy, which is a, quite an established variety in the Scottish market now. Uh, it's about 10% of the certified seed market in Scotland, about 14.5% of the, of the barley purchases. So. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's got its foot uh, uh, under the table, so to speak. Um, nice grain quality with Sassy, um, good specific weight, bold grains, low screenings. It does look that way. Agronomically, um, on, the, on the recommended list, it is marked down as a, a weaker strawed variety and it is a bit prone to brackling. It's always had these agronomic deficiencies, but it doesn't seem to have held it back really in its popularity in Scotland. I'm not aware of anybody having any major issues with it particularly. Not, not that I'm aware of. I mean, um, you know, a lot of these ones with, yeah. with PGR, them, you know, where they're known brackless, so it helps the job. But we've got, uh, it, looks, it looks a lot earlier. It was marked earlier for a while. Yeah. Now they seem to have leveled them all off, right. and really there's very little differences. I mean, we're looking here again, this and the Firefox, and you'd mm. see the Sassy was earlier, mm. and yet they're actually scored the same on the recommended <laughs> list. It's a um, but it's amazing how things move on. I mean, already this variety is 99%, uh, and we're about to look at Firefox on 103, so, you know, already slightly off the pace on the yield compared with the um, front runners. So I think this has probably reached market maturity at the moment, and maybe we'll start looking at um, new varieties coming through. Behind it. So still in the distilling only varieties, we've, we're now into uh, Firefox, um, which is a bit higher yielding than Sassy, 103% um, on the recommended list. Um, it's currently undergoing um, malting evaluation. It has been undergoing macro scale trials this year, but it hasn't yet reached full approval. So it's what we call uh, at the provisional two stage, further trialing going to be carried out X uh, Harvest 21. Um, it's shown some promise, Firefox. Um, there are claims that it is a lower skinning variety, which would be a good thing if that, if that is the case. Um, it was supposed to be fairly early here. I don't know. It's not looking very early, David. No, I think that's probably yeah. more more sight uh, yeah. and soil type rather than actual varietal. But yeah, but yeah you're right. It does look a wee bit there's different. Been, there's been a bit of appetite actually in Scotland for this. There's enough seed in the ground for three percent market share for next spring. So it's not. It's still at the relatively. Um, formative stages but another year and we'll have a bit more of an idea as to whether this one's going to make it so it's shown some promise but not quite there yet. Okay so now we're moving on to the dual purpose varieties which are um, potentially brewing and distilling and this is Laureate uh, fully approved for both brewing and distilling uh, market leading variety in the UK at the moment I think it would be fairly safe to say um, Phenomenal when you look at the seed stats, 44% um, of the certified seed in Scotland, 28% in England, 34% overall, 69% um, of the UK barley purchases last year Scary, isn't um, it? were laureate, uh, spring barley purchases obviously. Um, so yeah, it really is uh, at the top of its game at the minute. Um, 
and it seems to be doing the job in, in, in both sectors. I, I think it's, you know, this was the, the first one, was the, which was really the resetting of the yield expectations on it. And, you know, we know that Loviat is consistently yielding well above what, what, they, what the average used to be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's, a tough, it's a tough one to challenge and it's processing well as well, I think, for the, for the end user. It is, but it's interesting you should say that because it was the one that took on the yield from Concerto. Mm. But already mm. now it's at 100 yeah. and we're looking at Diablo and yeah. Tungsten and Firefox yeah. at 103. So arguably Laureate is no longer at the top at of the, the top. yield scale. Yeah. Uh, even though it only seems to have been around for five minutes, it's already just nudging back. So that's part of the reason, of course, we continually monitor the new variety because nothing stays the same forever and we're looking at varieties coming through which have got increased yield, better agronomics and, um, and potentially better malt and quality too so hence the reason for doing the trials like this and, and continually looking for the, the next big thing. Next one. And now we're into LG Diablo, uh, David, uh, also a fully approved brewing and distilling variety came along just after Laureate um, potentially just moving that yield um, level on that touch at 103 um, and, and again seems to be doing the job. It's not quite on the scale of Laureate at the moment. Um, certified seed market share probably around about that 12 to 15 percent mark in both Scotland and England. Barley purchase is about 8 percent in Scotland and about 4% in England, so it's certainly not at the Laureate level, but yeah, we've... Now it has the dual purpose, it'll it, probably... It has, I was about it. to say, yeah, it, it was a year late in getting that dual purpose approval for the brewing, which possibly just knocked it back a bit, and yeah. it did have a couple of initial issues actually in the market further north in Scotland, um, which seem to have been overcome. And I think we'll see Diablo possibly strengthening its position in the market going forward. Yeah, I think a lot of growers who've got a big area possibly want to spread the two varieties anyway so it was fitting yeah. into there and those growers that I've got who are growing Diablo are, are very happy with it it yeah. seems to like you say just uh, push the yield push the yield on and it, it is recognized as being that just that little bit later yeah you, um, can see you wouldn't that, necessarily yeah. notice it massively here today but I mean it has got that score of being a slightly later maturing variety and whether that just takes the edge off it for people in more northern regions yeah. or you know I think from an agronomic point of view as well, it seems to have, I mean, Laureate, it's not a weak straw variety, but it seems to be quite a thin straw, very aggressive tiller. Mm -hmm. This seems to be, you know, a bit more yeah. sort of robust in that side of things. Yeah. Um, it's always been, I mean, we were really one of the first to be right in, in it. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I think it hasn't, it hasn't disappointed anybody in this area. I wouldn't be surprised if this one actually, now that it has the, the brewing approval as well as the distilling, just moves on a notch yeah. um, going forward. So continuing through the dual purpose brewing and distilling varieties, we're now on to SY Tungsten, which is a more recent variety again. Um, fully recommended, uh, HDB recommended variety. Um, this one is similar stage to Firefox, so it is currently provisional two um, on the listing. It has had a year of macro scale trials and uh, hasn't completely crossed the line. Um, so another year's worth of trialing required. Uh, so still very much in the system, but a bit further further work needs done to it. Um, this variety is up there with Diablo on the yield. It's 103, so a very high yield. And it has a few agronomic advantages or grain quality advantages, certainly. It is, uh, has a better specific weight than both Laureate and Diablo. Um, and um, again, there, there, are, there are claims that potentially it is that slight bit better on skinning. Mm -hmm. um, but on the downside, it does seem to be a slightly more screeny barley, um, which is never a great thing to have. And it isn't quite as good on Rinko. I don't know whether you've got any agronomic comments to pass on this one, David. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, we've got it, last year it yielded very well in the places we had it and obviously got a bit more of it this year, but not really noticed a lot of the Rinko on it. Um, I think one thing that stuck out to a lot of people is it seems to have a massive head. It, it seems to just be carrying that number of grain sites and a very showy long head. Yeah. That might attribute a wee bit to the screens because obviously your top grains there probably Smart. aren't going to fill as much. So that might Smart. sort of link in with that. Yeah. But, you know, the growers that I had, the grew it last year and again or this year are very happy with it and seems to be you know look, looking like it's going to do the job uh, over and above what it's, they've been doing. It's been a little bit of a slow burn and I mm. think I think it really needs to just um, tick the boxes in the trials this year. Um, there was a lot of appetite to see how it did last year and um, so you know again like Firefox there's some promise to this variety but it isn't quite the completed article yet so uh, hopefully we'll be standing here next year with a bit more of an idea of whether we're going forward with tungsten or not. Yep. 
So we're still in the um, dual purpose brewing and potential brewing and distilling um, sector here. Uh, we've got a new variety to look at, which is called Winston. And this is currently an AHDV candidate variety. Um, so up for potential recommendation this year. Uh, and clearly it would have to get onto the recommended list before it could be further assessed for its malting quality, which is how the system works. Um, so very early stages for this variety. Um, in micro malt results it has shown some promise um, with uh, PSYs in and around about the control level and potentially uh, a bit of a higher enzyme, a bit of high D, higher DP about this variety. So um, it's one just to keep an eye on. Um, we can't really say too much more about it at the moment. I mean, agronomically, David, I mean, it's a wee bit look, short looks quite some short, of them, yeah. It's, yeah it's, um, uh, but you know, and uh, you know whether it's going to have the yield to get fully recommended, I don't know. Whether it's going to have the molten quality, it's just too early to say. Um, but it's one just to keep an eye on as a potential dual-purpose variety over this next 12 months. Okay, and just to conclude the dual-purpose brewing and distilling varieties, we've actually got two fairly early um, in the system. That is not early to mature varieties here. Um, both currently uh, in NL2 and potential AHDV candidates next year. We've got two new Syngenta varieties coming through. They're both non-GN potential brewing and distilling varieties. So this one here uh, is the one that was the highest yielding variety in national list trials last year. Um, this was very high yielding as well, but not quite as high as this variety. Um, but this one here has the slightly better wrinkle resistance. They both look as if they're going to have some promise and in early trials they've both shown fairly encouraging um, extracts and, and PSYs. Um, so I think the point here is that these are varieties which are some way away from um, commercial existences but this is, this is how early we're going back to look at varieties coming through. Um, and so it'll be interesting actually just to see how they do in this trial and to see how they do in the, la in the lab afterwards when we, when we have a look at them there. Um, potentially these are two high yielding varieties with, with some good quality so not even named at the moment just numbers which is and both fairly similar numbers which is a bit cumbersome hopefully they'll be named fairly soon and we'll be looking at them again next year um, with a little bit more information to give you on the two of them. Okay so now we're starting really on the on the uh, brewing varieties and um, we've got our uh, blue chip variety Golden Promise. Um, difficult to come up with an awful lot new to say about Golden Promise after all these years, but you can see how different it is in the field to everything else. Obviously massively earlier, um, pretty short. Um, David, how's it done this year in, in the field? Yeah, it's had, a, it's had a very challenging year in the field this year with the uh, weather conditions being up and down the way they've been. And as you can see, as Paul rightly points out, it's very short uh, just at the time that we're getting it was extending and we've got a lot of heat on them and it stopped them in their tracks and you know golden promise has really showed up its shortness it's early as you can see there this would cut this would cut the day i mean i'm biting the, the grains there they're hard to the bite everything like that people say you know why 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 still growing golden promise it's got very special attributes to to the brewers why why they need it but you know why do we need to be the premium there's the first answer on it you know look at the golden promise head look at the head of the bodies that we're producing now you know the difference in yield between the two is is quite staggering on it all but you know those growers who we've got who grew it do very very well they you know they do low nitrogen they do a really good job of it it's not a cheap variety to grow but you know we take a lot of pride in growing this variety for, for the maltings I understand, as you say, it is early, it would cut today. I understand there have already been Golden Promises cut yep. this year. Yep. We've had samples in, and so far the quality has been pretty decent. Been low very nitrogen. good, very low so, nitrogen. Um, yeah. yeah, looking quite encouraging, I think. Yep. Okay, so now we'll move on to uh, RGD Planet, which is by some margin um, the biggest brewing only variety um, in the market at the moment. Um, it's about 38%, I think, of the, uh, of the barley purchases in England. Um, it has been uh, a very good variety agronomically. I'm saying has been, it still is, but it, it's uh, it's interesting to note that already it's 99 on the yield. Mm. You know, it doesn't seem five minutes ago this was the variety at the top of the yield pile, and that's why everybody was growing it. So already just starting to to fade back. Um, agronomically, it's always been a nice variety, pretty early to mature, nice bold grains. 
Um, it's interesting that it's still 10% of the market share in Scotland and none of that is for malting at all. Yeah. That's purely just for feed. So agronomically as a variety, it stands on its own two feet just as a feeding variety. I think the straw is good, isn't it? I think a lot of them like it, it for the straw. There's a bit of straw on it, yeah. So I mean, it, is, it has been a nice variety, but as I say, already starting to, to, to move on, uh, down on the yield ratings. Um, and um, we're going to have another a look at a, a variety in a minute, which might potentially be a variety that will come up um, to usurp planet going forward. So here's one perhaps to keep half an eye on. This is Skyway. Um, it's an RGT Planet Cross uh, GN producer. So like all these ones here at the, this end of the field, it's just a brewing, potentially brewing only variety. Um, it's a year behind um, Firefox and Tungsten and Splendor and its evaluation. So this is a provisional one that still has to undergo macro scale trials. Um, it's shown some promise actually, I think, um, on the quality side. It, it's got a nice grain size. Um, agronomically, another one of these ones that's 103. So right at the top end of the pile, yield wise too. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this one, this one does going forward. There's about four or five percent it's enough seed to do about four or five percent of the certified seed market nationally um, this coming spring so still at the early stages um, but if it yields well this year and we get some trials underway on it next year for brewing um, potentially this is one that could um, could become uh, perhaps a feature going forward it'll all depend on the on the performance in the brew house and the brewing quality agronomically again it seems to be there um, we'll just have to see early days we'll just have to see how it does um, on the malt quality side. Okay so next in line on the brewing varieties is Cosmopolitan. Unfortunately not going to be an awful lot to say about this one. Um, it is a decent enough agronomic variety, a bit short strawed to really take off in the feed market but high yield unfortunately it just hasn't taken off on the malting side and it has now dropped out of the the malting evaluation system so um, unfortunately we're really going to have to move on from um, from Cosmopolitan um, but just on to the next one this is SY Splendor which is uh, currently under uh, evaluation for um, for brewing um, this is a high yielding variety at the same level as, as, as Tungsten and Diablo and Firefox at 103 um, it's a little bit later and I think you maybe could see that here actually, yeah, um, yeah. David. Um, and a, a bit like um, um, almost sister variety, if you want to call it that, tungsten, it isn't quite so good on Rinko. Um, but it'll all hinge on, on what it does um, brewing quality wise. Uh, another year's worth of evaluation required there. Um, so we'll have a bit more of an idea next year whether or not this is going to be a feature in the brewing market going forward. Agronomically it's competitive, still has it to prove on the quality side. Okay, so just to conclude on the um, potential brewing only varieties, we've got four new ones here. Um, there's actually six uh, new potential brewing varieties on the candidate list this year at the moment, and this is four of them. Um, we can just walk slowly down them. We've got SY Lowry, um, we've got SY Bronte, so two two potential candidates from Syngenta um, and we've got Porsche, Sonova variety and walking quickly to the end we've got LG Flamenco actually that's a year behind that is a that's um, a, a, an NL2 variety um, these are all potential sure. brewers there's also another couple um, Jensen and Spinner uh, the first hurdle these will all have to go through this November is to get onto the recommended list so first of all it will be down to the agronomics are they going to be sound enough and high enough yielding to get onto the recommended list if they are then next year they'll progress into the um, malting evaluation system and we can start to assess them for their brewing uh, potential so at the moment they all look pretty competitive on yield they all look to be reasonably decent on um, in micro malt trials on the quality but it's just too early to say which ones are going to be the movers and the shakers some of these next year we'll be looking at having made it and there'll be other ones which have which have fallen away so just an interesting chance to have a look at some some of these um, potentially up and coming varieties at an early stage um, and agronomically David have you seen anything special standing out on any of them at there's, all this there's year? There's nothing really I mean speed of emergence was all very similar straw height everything like that there hasn't really any, been anything that you could pick out differences on them but yeah. like you say it's it's early days yeah yeah yeah
So this time next year, we'll have a bit more of an idea. Some of these will be featuring, some of them won't. Yeah. Okay, so that hopefully gives everybody a little bit of insight into what's going on within the, within the spring barley market this year and going forward. So thanks to Paul for his uh, detailed view of the varieties and what to look out for. So a couple of weeks time, we're hopefully going to be down here harvesting this age old thing, six hectare field, hope to get 35, 40 tonne of barley off it. So, you know, put that into malt terms, we'll get a wagon load of malt off this field. So it's looking, like I say, promising on the harvest. Grain sites look good and everything like that, but time will tell in a couple of weeks time. And then after that, as I've been saying all season, we are going to be looking to, as part of our sustainability move, we're looking to put a cover crop trial into here. So we're putting three or four different cover crop examples in. So there might be a little bit of material through the winter as well for to keep people up overnight if they want to watch the videos through the winter. Um, and we'll uh, hopefully be back in a couple of weeks time with the combine.